looking forward to learning from all of you guys. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to talk about PIPM. Uh, if you're not familiar about, with it, um, we'll go through about, about it in a bit more detail uh, later. Uh, so a bit about me. I started Python development maybe about three years ago, uh, which coincided with when I started to get into development. Uh, I'm actually not CS trained. Uh, I am a marketeer, and uh, I did marketing and finance in university, so this is a bit different. Uh, I use Python mainly for web development uh, in Django. And uh, if you're interested in what I'm building, or if any of you are getting married, uh, <laughs> you can take a look at the first uh, one of my first projects uh, linked here in the description. All right, so uh, enough about me. Uh, let's talk about pipenv. Um, so what's pipenv? Uh, pipenv aims to bring the best of uh, modern packaging. So if you use things like npn, if you use things like yarn, uh, some of the concepts that we go through here will be quite familiar. Uh, it's by <coughs> Kenneth Reitz, who built the request uh, library, uh, and. What it mainly does is it helps to streamline uh, require requirements management uh, and also help to improve your portability of projects. So before pipenv, um, and I'm stealing this directly from Kenneth, uh, there were two like, sort of main ways you manage your requirements. right? One is that you look at top level packages. So you only put, like, for example, uh, the libraries that you really need. The great thing about this is that it's easy to manage you only have um, a list of requirements of, of the packages that you need. Um, but the problem with it is that once you start to push it to another environment like production, or if you have another new team member that joins you, uh, some things might break, right? Because packages get updated without you knowing. So the alternative to this is the second method, right? Which is version all the dependencies, okay? <laughs> so the problem with this is it's completely the opposite of the first method. Um, you end up with a really long list of requirements uh, that it's very clunky to manage. Uh, so what Kenneth did is he came up with pipenv, right? And what pipenv does is mainly based around two files. So you have a pip file, which it, um, lists all the high-level um, requirements in your package. And then you have a pip file.lock, which lists all the dependencies, all the hashes, and the versions of all the packages uh, within your environment. So again, very similar to npm uh, or yarn. So I think it's best that we uh, walk through a, a sample workflow. Uh, so I'm going to use um, version 8.3.1 and compare it with virtual env uh, wrapper. So when you're creating a new project in virtual env wrapper, you normally do make virtual env, right? In pip env, you need to actually cd into the project directory first. Then you run pip env uh, along with whatever Python version you need. So let's, okay, let's hope this works. Um, so I'm going to try this. I'm going to make a directory called example and cd into it. And then I'll run pipenv-3. So you could substitute dash 3 with dash 2 or dash python and then the exact version that you need. Um, but I think you do need to have the python uh, installation locally. Um, then, then again, I'm using Windows, so <laughs> you, I don't know. <laughs> Right, so uh, it's created the virtual environment um, for me. One thing you notice here is that um, the name of the virtual environment is a combination of the directory name as well as a hash um, that's a hash of the path to the directory. Okay, and it's also created a pip file for this project. So if I look at the directory now, you see that there is a pip file in here. And if I look at what's inside the pip file, um, it's quite bare bones um, for now, right? Mostly some metadata, and then an empty section for packages and an empty section for dev packages. So let's, uh, let's, let's install a package. So if you're installing a package in virtual env wrapper, normally you do pip install whatever package you need, and then you freeze the requirements, right? Uh, in pip env, you just need to do one command. That's uh, pip env install. So what this does is that it searches up the directory tree, um, for a pip file or the virtual env if it exists. Uh, it adds the package to pip file. Uh, one thing you notice as we go through later is that you don't need to actually do a dash save like you might do in npm. Uh, you can, however, do a dash dev to add it under dev packages. Uh, at the same time, if there isn't a pip file.lock, it will create a pip file.lock. If there's one, it will update um, the file. 
So again, jumping back here, let's do pip env install request. <laughs> and yeah, you have excellent taste here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if I look at the um, folder now, you notice I have two files here. I have my pip file, which now has uh, the request packages, and a star here because it's non-versioned. So if it's version, it would put the version number there. And I also have a pip file.lock, which has all the dependencies um, listed, as well as all their hashes and versions. So Pretty straightforward so far. So one thing you might have also noticed here is that the virtual env isn't activated by default. So we'll go into that uh, a little bit further. Um, another interesting thing to, thing to note is that um, I could have actually skipped one of the steps earlier. So if you look at this example here, I didn't actually need to create the virtual environment first. Uh, I could have just immediately run pip env install and that would automatically detect that there's no pip file, there's no virtual environment. So it would actually create um, a virtual environment and install um, request in this example. So you can try that on your own. Um, but going back to what we were talking about before, let's talk about activating and deactivating a project. So with virtual env wrapper, you normally do work on, and then the uh, name of the virtual env. And to get out of it, you do deactivate. For pip env, you actually need to be inside the project directory, or at least uh, inside the directory tree. So you can be in a folder below the, the directory, if that makes sense. Um, and then I run pip env dot shell. Uh, sorry, no dot there. Pip env shell. So just to kind of like highlight this um, fact, I'm going to make another folder here, and I'm going to enter that folder. And when I do pip env dot shell, it actually detects that this uh, project directory already has a virtual environment and a pip file, and it will spawn the virtual environment uh, accordingly. Okay, let's move this up. Okay, um, so if I do a pip freeze here, it should show already all the dependencies I installed. Okay, and to exit it, I just press exit. And one thing you might have noticed is that when I did the shell, it actually put me into the project directory. But when I left the shell, it puts me back wherever I was in the directory tree before. So that's activating and uh, deactivating a project. Um, if you're like me, you use virtual env wrapper for a few more things as well, right? Uh, in my post activate script, I normally export environment variables. And then I'm kind of lazy, so I cd into the project directory as well. So in pip env, you don't actually have support for any um, kind of lifecycle hooks in that sense. Um, the only thing that has built-in support uh, is actually the .env file. So I can actually create a file which has all my environment variables and pip env. If it detects it, it will load it up. So let's try that. And uh, I'm not a V expert, so I hope nothing blows up. Let's hear. So uh, I'm just going to create a very secret key here. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And um, before I run pip env dot shell, I'm just going to echo and show that there's no um, variable exported already. This time, if I do pip env shell, it will actually. Uh oh, sorry. Okay. No, it didn't. Uh, sorry, it didn't actually load the environment variables because I didn't put them in the same folder as the pip file. So let me move. Um, the dot m file. Okay, so. okay, and now if I do pip env shell, it should actually load um, the environmental variables first. So you can see the first line here, it's loading the dot m file. And if I do echo secret key again, um, you see that the environment variables have been loaded. Um, so if you're doing anything else with uh, virtual env wrapper, you probably have to do it yourself. Uh, I, I myself created a, a very simple shell script um, that when I run it, it, it opens up uh, pip env into the virtual environment and also does like webpack 
dev server and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about um, upgrading packages. Uh, in virtual env wrapper, you do pip install and then dash upgrade, and then you freeze again. Um, for pip env, it's a bit interesting. So uh, I can actually run pip env install, and it upgrades non-version packages automatically. Or I can do pip env install package with the version. Um, there was a bit of uh, unexpected behavior, at least on, from, from my perspective. Um, if you're moving from something that's version to non-version, um, so, for the example that I give uh, below, you, you see that I tried installing py test with uh, version 3.1. Uh, and then I do py test, uh, sorry, pit env install py test, this time without a version. Um, you would expect that this would actually uh, update um, the, the package in my environment. But what it does, all it does is update the pip file and the pip file.lock. Uh, it doesn't actually install the new package. So you need to kind of run pip env install again. So just a little bit of a cautionary um, look if you, if you ever try this on your own. OK, uninstalling packages is uh, similarly um, pretty straightforward. So virtual env wrapper, you do uninstall request, and then you've got to kind of figure out what the dependencies are, uh, and then you freeze. For a pip env, you can just uninstall um, the package directly. Um, one, another bit of weirdness that I found is that um, it updates the pip file and pip file.lock, so meaning like all the dependencies will be removed as well. Um, but it actually doesn't install, uninstall the dependencies. So that was a bit weird. So just to kind of show um, what I mean. So let's take a look again at our pip file. You see that requests are here. And if I look at um, my lock file here, you see that the whole list of uh, dependencies are there as well. So if I do pip env uninstall uh, request, it removes. It says it's removing the package, and you see that the pip file is updated. You also see that in the log file, all of the dependencies have been removed as well. So that's pretty powerful, um, or at least it's. I mean. It's a, I find it a lot less clunky uh, than managing your own requirements. Um, so I think the second last thing that you probably want to know about is how you delete um, a virtual environment. Uh, in virtual env wrapper, you would do remove virtual environment. And in pip env, you need to be in the directory again. And you run pip env dash remove. So here I'm going to do pip env. Uh, OK, let me exit out of the virtual environment first. And then I do pip env remove. You see that it's removing um, the virtual environment here. One thing to note is that it doesn't actually delete the pip file and pip file.log. So if I were to run pip env install again, it would use all the information that's in the pip file and the pip file.log. So just, uh, just something to note there. Um, yeah, and I think the very last thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of workflow is um, if you're setting up on a new environment. So say you've got uh, a new team member that joins. Um, what that guy normally would do uh, in, the old, in the old days is to create a virtual environment and then do pip install dash r to install all the requirements. Uh, in pip env, as long as you already have the pip file and the pip file.log, you just need to do pip env install. And that will... Um, install all of the, all of the requirements uh, that you need. So that's kind of uh, it for the workflow thing. I, I do have a few small things uh, that I wanted to talk about as well, but are there any questions at this point? Yep. Uh, what does PPAM do when, let's say, multiple packages have dependencies on the same package but different versions? <laughs> because for... Uh, or virtual and it causes uh -huh. some kind of problems? That's a great question. I've actually not tried it uh, myself. <laughs> no, it's, it's deliberate. Uh, so the whole point behind the pit file and the pit file lock is to deal with the dependency conflicts. So it will fail. Uh, and you can supply a skip lock option, uh -huh. which will overwrite that. Uh, cool. And there's another. And in the end, called graph, which 
lists a dependency graph. Um, and you can, in theory, use that to inspect your dependency tree and figure out where the conflict is in terms of it. Um, I have had issues when, when I actually had conflicts in the graph command didn't work. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm just going to show, thank, thank you <laughs> for answering that for me. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to show a command that, uh, sorry, just, just a quick one as well. Uh, Great question. I have zero idea because I've never <laughs> used Anaconda. Um, so I only know a virtual env wrapper uh, and pip env. So there's also someone who mentioned, I think in the Facebook group, py env, uh, py env. So what I understood is that you can use it together with pip env because I think that just um, looks after your Python version. Um, but I've not tried that myself. So you probably would want to test question. it. Yeah. Can we, for example, copy the whole environment and port to another PC? Um, no. So that's not really how virtual EMS work. You can copy the list of requirements in that sense, so you can copy the pip file and the pip file.log, but that person would still need to do uh, install and then it will download all the packages uh, online. You should look at PEX. Uh, you should look at PEX. Yeah, yeah, I know. Even if we copy. Uh, maybe you said in the beginning and I didn't listen. It's also using the dot virtual hands folder, right? <laughs> Does that clash with virtual hands wrapper? So um, I'm not sure what it uses by default if you don't have um, virtual env wrapper. But when I installed it, it immediately used um, virtual env. So I, I can actually um, activate all the virtual environments using virtual env oh, so wrapper. Well. Same structure. I think so. And yeah. Virtual env. Has yes. So I could actually do ls um, virtual env, and it lists all of the environments. Oh. So you see here that my example environment is there. I could actually do work on. Cool. It's, it's essentially just a massive wrapper around a whole. <laughs> 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 So it's uh it's uh, I guess the static is the term that we use, right? Um, it doesn't change. Yeah, it doesn't change. So um, it's from what I understand, it's a hash of the directory path. So every time you you, you create the virtual m from the same um, directory, it's going to, to give you the exact same um, uh, virtual m name. So maybe we, let's just try that out. Yeah. Can you override it? Um, not to my knowledge. Oh. I think it's built into a lot of the the way pip env works. Mm -hmm. But that would be a great question to to do some research <laughs> on, I guess. <laughs> because sometimes I want to try like with Python two and Python three in the same directory and what do I? So I think I think one of the main reasons why they do it is because you notice I never specified the name of the virtual environment in all of my commands. So the only way it can tell is, I, I, I'm not sure if it's looking for the pip file only, um, but it's also looking at the, the virtual env path, uh, sorry, the project's path itself. So that's why I think you can't really just change um, the names itself. Mm -hmm. So I think back to the question that you had earlier, let's just um, try that out. So I can do pip env dash remove to delete uh, my virtual environment here. And if I list um, the virtual environment, you see that my stuff, like the example, uh, it's not there anymore. If I do any pip env command, I think shell should also do the same thing. It will detect that there's no virtual environment for this project, and it will create uh, a new virtual environment for it. It's new in the sense that it's, it's a fresh uh, virtual environment, but the name should actually be the same. So, so that's so you can see um, the names are the same. Why you 
rename the folder. <laughs> then I think, uh, mm, let's try that. <laughs> um, OK, so uh, no, I don't think it is. But we can check that quite easily. So I don't think there's any where inside both the log file and the pip file that states the path. So, OK, let's, uh, is move the right command yeah. for this? <laughs> OK, so I've got my pip file here. Uh, OK, let's, let's delete the pip file just to be sure. So it should create, I think, a completely new um, virtual environment. So it should use example 2 instead. Um, and then the hash should be slightly different as well, I think, because the path has changed. So the hash is uh, different now. <coughs> Cool. Uh, OK, if there are no more questions, I'll carry on for the last few bits. Question? Yes? So if we have a company with a distributed library, is there any kind of configuration that we would consider in this? Rather uh, <laughs> than only just to get people So like, for example, if you have uh, something that's not on PyPy, but in a GitHub, uh, repository is it? Is it? Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for now, we actually we just put uh, that that we are inside the to com, which takes us to this server and the external one. And, uh, the concept of it. Then um, I don't know if this actually pick it up this. Uh, Okay, so um, this is again beyond my realm of knowledge. Again, the, um, what I do know is that you can um, specify VCS dependency. So if you wanted to pull directly from a GitHub repo, there's support for that. I have not tried it myself. <laughs> again, um, maybe the gentleman over there can help. So the question was um, if you have a company hosted package, um, can you install it with pipenv? So like a separate source? Yeah, maybe you guys like, want to stand up and talk. <laughs> could, you, could you cap the pip file? Because wasn't there something with PyPy there? It looked yeah, like that's, that's a repository <laughs> combination. I believe you can define another source. It's sort of specified with the <laughs> So I think you can specify another, another um, section just like this with a different source. So you would put in your custom company URL and then you'll find the packages within that and it would work. I, I'm pretty sure it's part of the spec. I don't know if it's implemented yet. But so I'll have to try it. It's, it's a strong Thank you. <laughs> Maybe it <laughs> Yeah, so, um, OK. Oh, yeah. Environment remains the same. Sorry, so you mean like if I the hash? The hash. No, but this is still the old one. I think you didn't get out. Okay, yeah, you didn't get out of the stage. You didn't exit from the Oh right, right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so that virtual environment shouldn't be there anymore. Um I only have my example too. I thought it was so magic, right? This thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, just some last few pointers uh, that I found in my own experience. So you probably noticed by now you don't want to delete um, virtual M wrapper just yet. Um, the quote I found in a GitHub issue uh, on pipenv is that you can create a virtual M um, using pipenv, but in of itself, it's not a virtual M manager. So I can't do things like list virtual environment, um, for example, that you can do with uh, virtual env wrapper. Uh, a few other small things. 
I, I think I already, or oh, you might have already noticed this, but Pip M doesn't actually look at your current um, activated virtual M. <laughs> so it looks again at um, the combination of the Pip file and the, uh, the, the, the directory path. So if I actually created uh, a virtual M, like I do Pip M shell, and I CD into another project folder, mm -hmm. Then I do pip env install, it will actually create a new virtual environment because it sees that it's a new uh, path. So just like a bit of a, a mental uh, model change there that you might need to take note of. Um, the other thing is that uh, I felt some of the commands do a lot, like <laughs> they make a lot of assumptions um, here. Um, this is all I could kind of gather from my playing around. So if you do pip env install a package, does a few checks. So if there's no virtual environment, it creates the virtual environment. Uh, if there's no pip file, it creates the pip file. And again, no log file, it creates the log file. And then if there's a log file, it updates the dependencies uh, where applicable. So this is not like um, officially from the website or anything. So I could be wrong. Um, but this is like kind of what I, I gathered um, from using it so far. Um, one other like tiny thing that, which I felt was a bit weird is that if you do uh, pip env and you install it to the de uh, the dev packages, so like you do dash dev, um, if you have another package already like the same package installed in your regular packages, it doesn't remove it from uh, the regular package list. Which like I th I think is different if you do npm, right? Um, so let's let's do that. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to install uh, request. Hmm. Okay, I just sorry. I just I just paused there because it exited me back into the folder which I thought I renamed already. So. <laughs> But I've already renamed the folder, so that's kind of weird. Oh, so you created the folder outside? No, but it's not created because if I did an ls, uh, it's still. Hmm, okay, weird. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so it says I'm back in the, the folder, but it's actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually back in the example 2 folder. So, hmm, lots of some weird things going on here. Uh, let's check pip file. Okay, so request is there. If I do pip env install request and I try to put it in uh, the dev packages. So you notice it, it actually didn't remove it um, from the dev packages. So if you're converting like uh, an existing project to pip env, you might want to uh, take note of this if you have like different requirements file for local and production. Um, speaking of which, there is actually a command to um, port over an existing project. So you can do pip env, I think the, the command was uh, pip env install dash r, and then your requirements uh, dot text file, and that will actually install um, all the requirements uh, from your older um, file. And if you run pip env install with a dash dev, it installs both um, the packages and the dev packages, which I think, again, is a bit different from how NPM uh, works. Okay, um, some very last few things. So uh, I've tried it in production, uh, but only on Heroku, uh, which is not a surprise because Kenneth works there. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I've also tried it on Python anyway. Um, but I had a bit of an issue there, uh, I think, with conflicting hashes. Um, and I've not actually retried it since then. Um, there was actually an issue, like when I, when I looked through the, the uh, GitHub issues, that um, they had an issue supporting multiple OSs. So like if your team used like different OSs, um, they had a problem um, creating the log file. Uh, but it should have been fixed by now, uh, according to them. So I haven't tried it. So again, um, if you want to use it in any sort of production setting in a team environment, uh, you should test it um, first. 
Yeah, and the last two things I think we, we mentioned earlier, so it works together with PyEnv, uh, and if you have any VCS dependencies, you can uh, actually in install those as well. So I think that's, that's it um, for me. Any <coughs> questions? Yes? Is it integrated with different IDEs? Uh, right now, no. Um, so, I don't know, is, is PIP and virtual amp wrapper integrated with any IDEs as well? PyCharm is quite good with uh, requirements of PXT files, so it complains about if you don't have, so if you include a package, but it's not listed in the requirements file. Ah, okay. So, I don't think there's any, um, any uh, such integrations, at least not any that I know of. Uh, if not wrong, the package itself is like maybe only a year old. So they're still like actively developing. So when I tried uh, installing this, I think it was last month, it was version 7. And, and today it's like version 8.3.2, right? So um, that's it. Uh, I think the guys are pretty smart, right? So, uh, and they are very, I mean, active development is good. Right. So anything that you need, you can actually go up to GitHub and post. Um, they usually reply like really quickly. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>